Hello, everybody. Oh my goodness, am I happy to be here. Um, this is a bit different, but today I thought I would start a podcast. So welcome to Cashy's Dank Podcast. I presume that's what I'm going to name it. Um, currently, no schedule for when I'm going to do these. I just, I'm going to pick them up and talk for a bit uh, as I feel like it. If you know me from Kranka, maybe you get to know a little bit more about me personally. Um, I will, I'll talk about like loads of different things in these videos. Um, there'll be timestamps um, on each one of these, basically with uh, different sections of shit that I want to talk about. So, let's begin. Um, hopefully, if you're watching this, uh, you don't know who I am. That'd be fucking cool. Um, but regardless, um, I know a lot of people that watch this are going to be like my true audience. Some people are going to be the, the people that will watch every single one of my videos. Maybe a few people that only watch me on Crunker will click on this. And then some other people will just fucking throw it on in the background to substitute for me not being live. And <laughs> I like those kind of people. <laughs> so I want to begin talking a little bit about my upbringing. And kind of the story of how I got to where I am now, which is someone that streams Crunker every single day and uploads videos on it re religiously and posts on TikTok and like my whole life essentially right now is Crunker. Um, and there's a good reason for that. I absolutely love the game. Am I slightly addicted? Possibly. <laughs> but I want to talk a little bit about how I got here. And then we're, we're also going to talk about what I think the future for me personally and um, the future for the game itself. Because I know a lot of people that are watching this are going to be very interested in my opinions on Crunker because I've never really made them public before. I know Carson invited me onto his um, Crunker podcast. Um, I think I'm going to be one of the last guests on there. Um, I'm hoping he'll still have some great questions to ask me. Um, but I just kind of want to do this for fun. I don't care how many views this gets. This isn't a Crunker podcast, although I will talk a lot about Crunker because that is a lot of my life. Um, but this is simply just for the people that give a fuck to like enjoy and watch wherever it gets 300 views or, or whatever like I don't mind um so yeah I I, I grew up <laughs> I was a little shit dude I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie I, when I was younger I was a little shit um well going into the earliest story I remember my parents telling me of me being me being a little shit I was like three years old going into like pre preschool or some shit um and I think I took a boy's truck he didn't want to play with me and i smashed him around the head with it or some shit and um from then on it was a weekly or bi-weekly thing of um, <laughs> my parents coming to pick me up and then the teacher pulling them over hey we got to speak to you charlie done something again my, my real name's charlie um I'll, I'll i'll change like some people call me cashy some people call me charlie there are generally a lot of people in my life that call me cashy um we'll get to that in a little bit and how it got to that point is a very interesting story it didn't start out very nice um, anyway, little shit through school, um, primary school um, in the UK is from four to year 11. That's primary school. Okay. I just want to say that. And we, we, we talk in years. So um, start, start of school, hated school, was a little shit, screamed, threw shit, uh, was the menace of the classroom. Um, but sometimes the class clown of the classroom. And that's essentially why I was um, until a lot of kids obviously took a dislike to me because I was this loud, very aggressive, hyper kid. Um, I done some very strange things as a child. Um, a, a lot of which is, is <laughs> kind of questionable. Um, but after a while of, of being this hyper aggressive, like child, a lot of other kids didn't like me. Um, Thank fucking God that where I lived, there was a kid that lived very close to me named Kai. I met him when I was like three or four years old. He's still my best mate now. Fucking amazing person. Um, he was like my only friend uh, in primary school. I had a few others, maybe Asher or some shit. Um, but mainly, I got bullied by the other kids. And then what that resulted in was me outbursting more in school, outbursting more at home, just being a fucking mental child. Um... And then I remember, like, I had a lot of anger built up towards the kids that bullied me. One time, I should probably give examples. One time, um, the, uh, I was probably beat, like, all this bullying was deserved, by the way. I'm going to get to why I think this was deserved and how this actually made, like, my life a bit better. Um, so I was probably just being a little shit, screaming in some kid's fucking face, probably hit him or was shaking him. Or I remember one time I accidentally hit a girl around the head with a bat, which is a story I'll get into in a bit. But, um... These kids decided, hey, we're gonna we're gonna throw rocks at Charlie today, and they were all fucking lobbing rocks at me. They were all in a circle. 
and one kid threw one over a fucking wall, right? I don't know how he hit this. This was like a cross map. Over the wall, pew, back of my head. You know what I see? My vision starts twirling, fucking dude. Um, go to the head teacher. Never found out who the fuck threw the rock um, until like seven years later. Um, got bullied by this one ginger kid called Aiden. And I remember I made fun of his mum for being ginger one time and, and it was the only time I actually made him upset because he always used to bully me. So I already any gingers out there. But um, I was very angry towards him um, because he literally bullied me from year like one to like six. And one time, the very end of the year, I was trying to find any excuse to beat this kid up. So he, <laughs> he, he brushed past me in the classroom, like barely just like nudged my arm, turned to him, I was like, what the heck did you do? You tried to hit me. I grabbed him. And you know you have those, like, coat pengers? Peggers? Well, what the fuck? Um, peg hangers. Where you hang your bags up. I slammed him on one of those. I, d I must have just, like, slapped him or fucking hit him and just gone crazy. He ended on the floor. Like this did. <laughs> like, I remember all the other kids from the other class, like, ran through. Um, and there was like 60 kids there just standing over him, just looking at him, just shaking on the floor. I was just standing above him, dude. I threw him at a fire escape door as well. That's how the teacher came over, because they heard me fucking push the fire escape door open. Anyway, I was, I was, I, I done some weird, crazy shit. Um, as I said, I also hit a girl around the head of a bat. Um, I don't know why. There was these parachute things, if you don't know what they are, they're just like a big blanket and like you can, you know, it like floats in the sky and shit and like loads of kids play under it. And for some for some reason I went in just fucking swinging a bat, dude, but I was like on top of it and I fucking accidentally just hit a gun. Not funny. Not funny. I ended up missing loads, of, like there was this super cool event happening at school and I missed it, dude. I could have, I could have ate tea, you know, drank tea. I don't think they actually gave us tea. It was probably like fake tea and like had lunch for the Queen's anniversary. And then all the kids went out to play on the field. And I just had to sit with the ugly, grumpy receptionist. What was her name? I remember she got, she had a, the, the receptionist was cheated on uh, or like her husband had an affair. And he was also, he was also a teacher and he was gone. And then I just remember all the time I knew her, knew her, she was just fucking grumpy and just angry. The reason I know that's because my sister told me. My sister told me after I finished that school. Anyway, moving through to primary, uh, to high school, um, went in and <laughs> this is where it gets interesting, dude. Um, went into high school and I, so like growing up as a kid, I played a lot of games. I know I've only focused on like school because it, it's the kind of easiest timeline to remember in my head. But um, I I uh, I played a lot of games growing up before before I get to high school. Um, and I remember when I was younger, I I I, I remember the, the order that I got each one of my consoles in. So I I grew up when I was like seven. I was playing um, PS2, my sister's PS2. We had Sims. We had uh, Simpsons Hit and Run. We had Spider Man, like or or some shit. Um, pretty cool games. Then I got a DS for Christmas or my birthday. My birthday and Christmas are very close, so got a, got a DS for Christmas. Uh, then we got a Wii. Then we got then then it was the Xbox 360. Then that's when I was gaming, dude. Because I really wanted an Xbox because we used to go to my dad's friend's house, and it would I was I was like maybe like nine, and it would always be like dad. Can you ask him if I can play his Xbox, please? And it, so he'd always ask, and I'd play split screen with one of them. We played like COD, like World. Well, I think we played World at War. Uh, we played like Black Ops One. Played Black Ops One Zombies. I knew I needed an Xbox. Got it. I was nine years old. The gamer tag was uh, oh, my first gamer tag. Right, my dad used to call me Charlie Monkey, and for for a while I was called Charlie Monkey Boy. So when creating my gamer tag, you would assume that's what I'd make it, right? So we were making it. And I was like, no, change it to Panda. <laughs> they were like, are you sure? I was like, yeah, Charlie Panda Boy. That was me, Charlie Panda Boy 9. Charlie, yeah, Charlie Panda Boy 9, which shortly got changed to Gaming Music Boy 99 when I created my uh, YouTube channel that I was allowed to get for Christmas in 2012. So yeah, a couple of names. Xbox 360 was a shit. Everybody knows what's up, dude. Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, fucking MW2, I didn't play much MW2, MW3, fucking 
gaming, bro. Minecraft. Had the f had Kai come over, what, as I said, one of my only friends to play split screen like every fucking day. I've still got that world on a hard drive somewhere and I genuinely want to make a video or at least just make even not a video, like have him come over and we just go through the world, not touch anything, but just look around it. I think that'd be absolutely amazing because that was the world that I beat all the Minecraft achievements on. Every single one. So like, there's like a, like I, you, you walk out the front of my house, there's a massive hole in the ground for when I had to get the when pigs fly achievement. <laughs> Played a lot of games. Going into high school, uh, I had a PS4 that I bought with my own money, which fuck knows where I got it from. I think Christmas and birthday and I just saved and like done a few things and I don't, I don't fucking know. Um, bought a PS4, like going into like uh, high school. Um, high school didn't go well. <laughs> High school, uh, I was the the I was the the funny guy. I don't want to call myself because I know I was a little shit, but I know that I was funny. I I don't care, dude, because kids would laugh, right? So that that like that meant something. Um, it wasn't like I know a lot of people like say that they were the class clown and they were like a little shit for attention. Mine genuinely wasn't for attention. Um, I couldn't give a fuck. Like I, I think I learned this a little bit later on actually, but after a while, I didn't really give a fuck about what the kids thought. Um. Because I, I, I found a few friends uh, and then inevitably I go from getting bullied to get being calm with everybody. And this is how it happened. Um, got bullied severely. Uh, the, like the class clownness was just because I was bored in class. Like genuinely, I was just trying to try and find any way to entertain myself. Sometimes getting sent out of the class would be better because if you got a nice teacher, like he might let you play fucking basketball or some shit. Actually happened once. Um, um, anyway bullied the fuck out of uh and then coming into late year seven so i was like 11 coming into 12 years old here i got bullied heavily for making youtube videos and i've been making youtube videos for i don't know how long um i was making cod zombies videos i was making black ops 3 cut commentaries black ops 2 cut commentaries like i've been making videos since i was fucking eight years old eight like seven like I, there are videos i post a fucking tiktok today <laughs> and i had to go back it was like nine years ago i made my first youtube video man like in, in fuck it before 2012 i made it on my like someone else's youtube channel it's privated now dude but anyway i was making videos um vlogs this that whatever i found interesting whatever i enjoyed i got bullied heavily for that kids didn't like me doing that and there was an argument over a high jump game between me and these other people because I actually beat them and they didn't want to like accept it. And um, there was a lot of beef between us. I would get called Justin Bieber. I would get called the, the fucking faggot and all this shit. You're a gay lord, dude. You're a, you're, and then inevitably, it, I, uh, I, I was also getting into like heavy metal music. So not only was I being bullied I was also turning into a fucking emo which really didn't help because that just that just gave them more fuel to fire um so it turned into right near the end of year seven it's funny how I have these these big fires right at the end of the year so right after, right at the end of year seven I was like fuck it I said to my two friends I was, I was talking to at the time I said if anyone says anything about my youtube channel today I'm gonna punch them and that's what happened two kids walked up to me that I had argued with previously in school and not gotten on with. Um, they were like, oh, Cashy Cans, can we watch your YouTube videos with you? Can we watch your YouTube videos with you? I stood up. This is the first time I'd ever stood up after like a hundred times of them saying something to me. I stood up. And, they, and then they, they didn't really know what to say. They didn't say anything. And I walked up to the one that was talking the most. I said, Cashy Cans. Cashy fucking cans, and I, I, it, I tried to punch him, but it was like a slap, so it was more like this, dude. I bang, and then he didn't really react, so I just fucking bang, 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 bang. We're we're like two eleven fucking twelve year olds, like you could imagine, dude. Swing, 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 grapple, dude, grappling each other like this, just like fucking, like no technique, fucking just anything you can get in. We ended up tussling over near to this bin and we were like throwing each other into the fucking bin and shit. And then as uh, his his friend like starts running over, right? Um, he's like, spill it up, spill it up. So I'm like saying that and saying that. And I've had enough. Um, I push him off me, right? And we kind of, we push back off each other because his friend's like coming through the middle of us. But just before his friend comes through, I'll never forget this. 
as we were pushing away from each other, he goes like this, bang, just fucking chips me like that. Oh, the disrespect, the disrespect. <laughs> and that kind of hurt as well, because I like, I was like, yeah, we're done, dude. And he's like, oh, whatever. Um, his friend said he won. My friend said I won. People that knew better say I won. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but he had more friends, so obviously everyone thought I lost, because not many people actually really saw it. Um, they, the school actually did help quite a bit they like spoke to some of the kids and like got some of their parents in and, and whatnot and it, it, it chilled out a bit and as i said that was the end of the year went to year eight i was this emo kid i was the, the class clown i was always causing issues i wasn't doing much work um and that kind of that kind of like was a theme <laughs> like being a little shit i got excluded for being rude to a teacher i flicked a i flicked a piece of paper at teacher bro and and she she said it was threatening and got me excluded for a day because she went to the head teacher and like exaggerated some. I have a I have a lot of school stories. I don't want to bore you with all of them today, so I'm gonna leave them at that, and we're gonna move on a little bit. Um, so I went through I went through school, and here's how here's how the bullying actually stopped. I was so severely fucking bullied for being like I'm as a kid like very hyper and very not like blah 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 blah. blah, blah. And and I think that like what that done to me is like, it kind of chilled me out a bit. Like I kind of uh, like going into like year nine, I kind of chilled out a bit. I became friends with like some like fairly respected people in my year, and then inevitably, funnily enough, because I became friends with this guy, and then this guy, and then everyone else kind of matured from this like bully childness. Like we all kind of like matured as people and we get like, I, and then I actually like made a connection like with a lot of fucking people in my, in my year, but especially like going into year 10 and 11. Um, my exams, I passed everything other than business, chilling, um, got into college where I'm currently sitting now and I'm doing media two times a week. So what else did I, what else did I want to talk about? My growth on Twitch and how I, how I started streaming and like what, what, what like the the motivation behind that was for me so when i was 14 um started well <laughs> started streaming when i was 11 told everybody i was 12 i didn't even know twitch tos was like 13 um started streaming clash of clans that's where the name cashy cans came from it was my dad came up with it because i used to play a lot of clash of clans and then I'd, I'd say Clash of Clans to him. He'd say Clashy Clans, and it turned into Cashy Cans. Um, started streaming Clash of Clans. Then I started streaming Agario. And every four followers, I would eat a uh, one of those super sour sweets, what they're called. Oh, fuck, I don't know what they called. The American ones. They were actually really bad, um, but I'd done it for the followers. Uh, streamed, like, uh, Clash Royale. Streamed a lot of COD Zombies. Um, that was on Twitch. Got into a stream team. They ended up abandoning me. I ended up crying. Um, one of the, the like one of the leaders sold his account, <laughs> like because he got happy. He had like twenty five k followers. Like, what the hell, dude? Um, moved on. Found YouTube streaming when I was like thirteen, fourteen. Streamed Fortnite YouTube, and um, fucking loved it. Streamed Fortnite. I started on the PS4, and went to the pc got my pc because uh i got my pc as a christmas present it was a pre-built but it was by like uh like a like a pc sh like uh guy and it was actually uh, yeah, yeah it was pretty dog shit i won't lie <laughs> ended up upgrading it down down the road um and i started streaming on a 750 ti and a i3 4150 that was the upgraded pc <laughs> so um yeah, started streaming Fortnite, and then Christmas rolled around, and the Christmas update rolled around, and I got a 1060, 3 gig, don't fucking buy that, don't buy the 3 gig, get the 6 gig, and a i7 4... 4 something, uh, it was like a 4th gen i7, not very good, but it ran, um, and then I could stream, like, like, decently on OBS, so I just started streaming every day and i was already like making random videos and shit and i made a few fortnite videos and ha i was like i was like a 20 average viewer for like a year straight um and it was just fucking fun like i didn't care i like some days i like i would peak at 50 some days i would stream and i had five i fucking loved it every single day because i got consistent and it got good and in the summer i threw away my whole summer 
and all my social life to stream Fortnite every single day. And do you want to know what fucking happened? Do you want to know what fucking happened? When I, I threw away six weeks, dude, right? Streaming every single day. All right. Last three days of the summer holiday. Do you want to know what happens? Fortnite announce a grappler event. Now, some of you are going to know where this is going if you looked at my uh, popular videos. So I streamed this new grappler item and clickbaited the bit of the thumbnail. I had like 1k viewers. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Chat thuming. I have been blessed by the YouTube algorithm. Streamed 8, 12 hours that day. Next day, got up, 10 a.m., go. Fucking stream. Stream 12 hours, 8 hours, some shit like that. 2k. Stream the next day. 8, 12 hours. I start. I had to make sure I started streaming like 9, 10 a.m. That, for some reason, it worked. Turned out to be because of the Australians. I asked them on the third day. I was like, where are all you guys from? Big Australian view account. Don't know why. It was just my time and my, like, the record. It just worked. Something just worked. And then you want to know what happened? Streamed it for three days. All right. Went back to school. Couldn't stream at the same time. Went live that night. 50 viewers. I said, okay, this is cool. We'll, we'll, we'll stream a bit more. Um, and I said to myself, if I ever, ever, ever see anything like a slight opportunity like that ever again, I will never fucking forgive myself for missing it twice. So, continue streaming Fortnite. Inevitably, um, after a year and a half, started to get in inconsistent. Um, I was a bit salty. I'm not going to lie. I was a bit of a salty fucking Susan, but I still loved it. But here's what happened. It wasn't just because of what happened. What also happened was the decline in Fortnite. <laughs> As many of you know, Epic just decided to... Like, this... Oh, so, so, coming from, like, Fortnite, right? Fortnite didn't give a fuck. Like, it didn't know what it wanted, like, from its community. It it really tried to appeal to, like, the, the casual gamer and try and sell them all their shit, but then also tried to market themselves as an esports game to also rinse the esports. Like, it didn't work. They fucking... I hated it after a while. I played longer than a lot of people, actually. I did. Um, Hopped off Fortnite, hopped off streaming, hopped off YouTube, made a few videos here and there, disappeared for six months. Do you want to know where I went? started socializing i started uh going out i had um actual like normal um like summer i was uh 15 and went out got drunk partied a bit you know done some shit that we we won't disclose as of yet on the, my public youtube account but it was a fucking great time dude i had a, i had a great summer um and i didn't stream but i missed it I missed it a lot and uh, like a lot of my um, last year at school I missed it when I was like 16 but I, I was still living like a normal like life of just like not streaming every day and I, I made videos um, here and there just like random ones made a few fucking songs as well um, <laughs> but I've always been interested in doing shit on the internet I've always like earned money like do by doing random shit on the internet and buying and selling random shit um supreme being one and like um like gaming equipment and like you know what i mean um and then i got back into streaming um because <laughs> because i found crunker i found crunker you want to know how i found crunker everyone at school used to talk about it but it was banned at my school because everyone got onto it so i never got the luxury of playing at school but I used to play, uh, I would just, like, I've played a lot of games, right? And I go hard on games a lot. Like, when I find a game that I like, I go hard on that game. And I was in a bit of a stage of not really, like, having a game to go hard on. I think I just got off playing, like, a beta or, or like, some shit like that or something. Um, or whatever. I'd play random browser games. And I remember someone, like, said Crunker at school, right? And I remember, and I was, like, it was, like, 3am and I was remembering. Oh, Crunker! 
Krunker is all word of mouth, bro. Everyone you ask, how do you find out about Krunker? Word of mouth, bro. It's fucking incredible. Krunker doesn't do advertisements. And this game has is, is, is got such a fucking community. The word of mouth of Krunker is fucking insane. And you know what? The You know what else is a huge strength? The accessibility. Because as soon as I remembered it from my friends at school saying it, all I had to do, Krunker.io. Oh shit, I'm playing. Switch to Sniper instantly. Bidding, bidding. It was kind of fun. Played it for 15 minutes. Maybe like 30. Closed it. Couple of days later, opened it again. Closed it. Couple of days later, opened it again. And then, uh, I uh, remember one of my friends getting on and I was like, come play Crunkle with me. And uh, he had played it at school as well. He's like, fuck yeah. And I 1v1'd him on Little Town, beat him. And then I started to learn about slide hopping because I found Frosty Wolf's video. And then I found the Twitch community. And then this is what changed my life. This is what changed my life. I found out that people stream this game. I was like, oh my god, I found Frosty Wolf. I found Strams. I was like, I want to be like one of these motherfuckers, dude. I want to be up there like one of these motherfuckers, bro. I used to watch Frosty Wolf every day, man. <laughs> I was like, fuck it. Yeah. Uh, but what was funny was I had already started streaming Krunker before I found out there was a Twitch community. I would stream Krunker, like me just playing pubs and like doing challenges and shit. Um, before I knew about anything, like to three viewers, to two, like just to Cammy sometimes, I'd just be sitting there and crunking on Twitch. And the reason I like Twitch is because I could play whatever music I wanted. That's why I really like Twitch. I love the emotes as well. I didn't even know people streamed this game months before I started streaming it. <laughs> like, I was, I was streaming it for probably like three or four months. Um, not every day, but like maybe like once a week, twice a week. Um, before I knew that anyone played it. Found Frosty Wolf. I was like, oh my god. This game has a big community. Holy shit. Started doing a bit more digging. And then I was like, wait a second. It's not a huge amount of YouTube content, but there's a, there's a decent amount of Twitch. Wait a second. Wait a second. So no one... So, so all of you guys stream on Twitch. Mm, like 10% of you make YouTube videos. It was literally like Frosty Wolf. He was like one of the only, he was like the, one of the first people to make a YouTube video. It was like the, the slide hopping video because he was fed up with people always asking in chat about it. Wait. So you guys do all this cool stuff on Twitch and nobody puts it on YouTube, the more discoverable platform? Oh my God. Crunkies M1. And there it was. There was the idea. That's, that's how it came about. I'm not announcing how I got the name, like how I figured, like, like what the, the M1 means until we hit 100k. Um, but I uploaded two videos. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open them real quick here. I'll tell you what they were. I accidentally just typed Crunkies MQ2. That's the, yeah, that's the secret Crunkies channel. <laughs> okay, so the first videos here were back-to-back -back plasma dust unboxing. And it had Frosty Wolf in the, in the thumbnail. And then this other kid that unboxed the, the, the plasma dust. So I made that video, posted it. It was eight minutes long. It was just people's clips. No editing, no credit, nothing. And then I also made a video, pros share their secret cranker settings. It was Frosty Wolf in the thumbnail and Strems, the two biggest streamers at the time that were pulling like 100 to 150 viewers. Um, then I forgot about the channel and I forgot about Krunker for a while. I used to go hard on the game. Me and my friend Jep used to play a lot of ranked and shit. Um, and we were playing it a lot. He stopped playing it a bit. I stopped playing it a bit. Um, for like two months. Come on for two months. And then, uh, inevitably, like just how Krunker is, like you play it here and there. I don't remember exactly when I picked it back up again. Um, it wasn't a very like long break. I noticed I got a notification on my phone that I was getting like comments and I was like, what the fuck? I don't really upload on YouTube. Like I'm really not uploading at the moment. And then I look and these videos I posted had like a few thousand views and that was all I fucking needed. That was the, that was the, 
that was the moment I realized, like when I saw 2k views on that video, that was the moment I realized that I had the, I like, I had the best fucking, uh, Crunker channel. Like I knew that it was instantly just gonna fucking, like I could, I, like I had a, 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 an opportunity here again. Unlike the last one, I wasn't gonna let this one fucking slip through my fingers. So, you know what I done? I found the best fucking Crunker clips I could, put them all in the video. It was a uh, Corolla unboxing video. The video now sits on 176,000 views. Streamers unboxed the rarest items Corolla. And then there, there you go. Since that day, every single week, sometimes two times a week, uh, not anymore though, mainly just once a week, um, I've uploaded Crunk Clips for over a year. Channel sits at 5.7 mil views, 33k subs. But it wasn't all sunshines and rainbows. So I started uploading the videos and as I said, the content was like pretty uh, lackluster. Because it was just an idea, right? It was just like a, hmm, can these videos do well? And after a while, I realized yes. And after a while, I realized the Twitch community, a few of the, uh, the Salty Susans over there were a bit upset that the quality of the video... <laughs> the quality, they, like people would complain the quality of the videos was, was, was bad. And that the clips were just yoinked and it was, there was no credit. So do you know what I done? I went and corrected those. Um, and here's where things uh, really changed for the channel for me. I remember Frosty Wolf saying, I went into his chat because I, I saw that he was sub to Crunky's M1. And we had like 2,000, 3,000 subs at this point. I saw it on the side of his YouTube. So I donated 100 bits. Hey, Mr. Frosty Wolf. I own Crunky's M1. Chances of me getting verified. And he had the permission to verify people at that point. He goes, If you can prove to me you're the owner of Crunky's M1, verify you right now. I was like, Oh no, he goes, I'll verify you myself. I was like, Oh shizzle. Linked to the, the Crunky YouTube to the Twitch. And then he started watching some of the videos. He had his own criticism of the videos, which was absolutely fucking amazing. Um, I'm really glad that he gave me feedback. Um, he was like, look, do this, do this. Um, this needs to be fixed. Um, don't get, don't get, like, don't get clips like this and like have them really long. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so for the next month, I made better videos. Um, and then he inevitably told Sydney about my channel. Sydney liked my channel, liked what I was doing. He liked the, uh, he always, like Sid told me he liked the produ production value of my videos. Um, so heh, take that all the people that fucking call my content dog shit and stolen. Um, and then he, en he ended up verifying me a fucking while ago now. I tell you something, it only took me a few months to get verified in Crunker. It only took a few months because my channel just took off. Um, and then I also at the same time, um, after getting my head into Crunker a little bit, I made my own Crunker videos. I started out like the rarest items in Crunker that got 13k views. Crunker tier list, clips, and then I started making trading videos. And then that's where I found myself. Done the frostbite. You guys know the fucking ting, dude. Um, and I, I streamed it. I streamed every single moment of me doing all these these cool things on Crunker. Um, uh, I, I made sure that like it was stuff that people would give a fuck about. So if I was trading up to something really cool, we'd put it in the title and we'd let everybody know and I'd make a video out of it. Or if there's an event, event I'm doing and I always try to keep my streams uh, like something something for people to look forward to. And that when they're there, they don't feel like they've been like schemazed into being there. You know, they feel like when they're at my stream, they are getting the the best content that I could possibly give them. Um, and that's what I try to do every single fucking day, every single fucking stream. I try to make sure that I give as much to the viewer as possible because I know at the end of the day that if I can like uh, do the most and, and give the most that I can to the most amount of people through my streams and through posting videos of my streams and, and, and things like that, like inevitably the return will come. Um, and I fucking love streaming. I fucking love making a connection with people. I love the, the people that come into my chat, the ones that don't beg for KR and make me want to fucking kick them down a flight of stairs. Uh, everyone else is absolutely amazing. Uh, I got infinite amount of love for everyone that enjoys my content, man. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to sit here and, and love you all up, dude, but just know, just know whether you talk or not, whether you lurk or you're subbed, 
I appreciate you. So the last thing I want to talk about here is what do I want for the future of Krunker? Now, the future of Krunker, I, don't, I, I want to be... Here's the thing, when I do these videos, I don't want to have to worry about what I'm saying because I only want to speak the truth. But I'm going to preface this by saying I'm not a fucking developer. I'm a 17-year-old Krunker IO block gamer. If my opinion you think is retarded, let me know. Um, don't, like, the, here's, the, here's the thing. What I'm saying isn't what is definitely going to be the best for Krunker. But in my eyes, I think it is um, a good path to the game. And I know a lot of people agree. So... Here is my head with the game um, and where I think it should go like the next year or two. So right now, or where I think it's going to go also. So right now we are sitting on the fucking cliffhanger of comp and drops. Comp is about to release with uh, face it servers, which means we're going from eight tick rate to 64 tick rate in Essentially, it means you're not going to get shot around walls anymore. The, the servers are going to refresh so much faster than they, they do uh, regularly. There's going to be the face set anti-cheat and also the hitboxes are going to be reworked so that like the hitboxes are more accurate to where the player actually is, which is going to feel super smooth. It's going to be like Krunker like we've never felt it before. Um, competitive is going to be really fun. There's going to be new skins and that's going to be a lot of content for people to indulge in and there's going to be new seasons every two months. Cool. Um, trading is another thing that I think really keeps the game alive. Items is something that people always love. And uh, so you can, um, you can sit and trade, uh, all day and be nowhere near and unobtainable. You know what I mean? You got to put a lot of work in for that kind of stuff. And I think that's like the motivation that keeps a lot of people pushing through trading and, uh, keeps the game interesting. Um, a lot of people don't want unobtainable. Some just want their dream outfit and that's perfectly fine. Also, I think the community of the game is also holding it very strong at the moment. Um, Everybody knows everyone. Everyone knows what's going on. The devs are really communicative, communicative um, with what they're doing. I remember Sydney coming on Frosty stream, and Frosty would take ideas from chat and tell Sid. And it's always been a fucking amazing the kind of community engagement they have. Uh, I know, okay. A lot of people like to shit on the devs because they take ages to release shit, bro. You gotta fucking remember, guys. What did you What did you do when you started playing this game? You played this on your fucking browser, okay? You played this game on your browser and you would run around and shoot block people for fun. And now you're worrying like about shit that, that is just not possible or just takes a long time to fucking release. I understand. The, the one thing I will, I will um, say is I don't like how the devs will say something bef like before it's ready. I think, I think that's a bit uh, strange, but they've got their own way of doing things and sure they like think things happen and I think they're doing a good job now picking up devs and as long as comp releases well and drops brings a few more twitch viewers in I think we we are gonna be seeing a good time um that's short term long term what I'm excited for is survival because it's a a um another game mode for people just fucking indulge in there's so much content in survival if you are not excited for survival you should be because I'm gonna make so many fucking videos on it and stream it a shit ton hopefully as well as comp I'm gonna get rank one on comp but scripting, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think a lot of people understand. So I want, I want you to listen close. I'm not going to let this run for much longer. I'm going to try and keep these between like 45 minutes and an hour. So scripting, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the thing with scripting. If you wanted to make chess, you could. If you wanted to make Agario, you could. If you wanted to make a massive world with MMORPG where you could level up your ability to chop down trees while also managing an inventory, you could. If you wanted to make a spin wheel and then the, the spin wheel has a camera attached to it to take a screenshot and then that screenshot sends it to dislike, you could. There is so many possibilities of map making. Krunker is a game engine here. When scripting releases, Krunker, if you go into the Ender site, you have Krunker and you have Krunker Game Engine. Krunker is literally building a game engine for the community to make maps on so that then they can release the maps, get paid for releasing the maps because if you're a partner, you get paid off map plays. And then the community, the, the sorry, the like the players play the community maps and it keeps the ecosystem going, right? That's what I think they're trying to do here. That's That's what I think they're trying to get to where... People, like they're already hosting a fifty thousand dollar map making tournament, and scripting hasn't even fucking come out yet. They just want to get people used to using the game engine and the tools that they have. This is this is at least what I think, as I said, so that when 
scripting releases, the people that know what they're doing with the game engine can make some sick shit with scripting. It brings loads of players over to these new game modes because now all of a sudden you're not, you're not just doing parkour. You're running around in this realistic universe with 200 other players where these trees are hanging over you where you can fucking pick apples and go and trade them with this guy. And then this guy will send you on a quest to the other side of the world where you tell her, like, you can invest so much hour, so many hours in these kind of things. It's going to be like how you see like trading um, as like a game mode, right? It's going to be like so many ones of those you could you could do it's it's crazy the the kind of shit you can you can do and the kind of worlds people are going to be able to build with scripting and i really hope that 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 ecosystem um works well and i hope that the community holds strong until the devs have released the tools to do this kind of stuff i think that was a that was a good talk I think that was, yeah, I think that was pretty decent. There is definitely a lot more that I would like to talk about in the future. As I said, I don't know how often I'm going to do these. It's just going to be like, as and when I feel like talking, I'm just going to talk. Um, so thank you for watching to the end. I hope this like gave you a nice insight, uh, um, a little bit more into me. If you would like to suggest any topic ideas, drop a fucking comment. I read them all. Um, let me know what you want to hear me talk about. Um, and I'm also interested, how did you watch this video? Did you watch it or did you listen to it? And if you listened to it, what were you doing while you listened to it? All right. It's been me. Thank you all so much for listening to me um, talk and ramble for a little bit. And uh, yeah, thank you. Bye.